take a look at this place right here. This piece of land is called Turkey, and it sits in a really interesting place geographically as it works almost as a bridge between Europe and Asia. Bordering Greece and Bulgaria to the west, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan and Iran to the east, as well as Syria and Iraq to the south. And then all of that sharing a land border, a bit further down south sits Cyprus. It's home to roughly 85 million people, and when we mention Turkey works as a bridge, here's what we mean. The country is surrounded by water on three sides, the Black Sea to the north, the Mediterranean Sea to the south, and the Aegean Sea to the west, making it a large peninsula that bridges the two continents. Turkey has some amazing landscapes, being a predominantly mountainous country, it feels almost as if every picture taken here could work as a wallpaper, like this one for example. And speaking of amazing things, if you enjoyed this video so far, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more great content. Anyway, all these mountains surrounding the country makes the weather vary quite a lot from region to region, with milder Mediterranean type climate at the coast, two hot summers and cold winters at the inland plateau. It's also prone to some severe hailstorms. Turkey's placement geographically also makes it one of the most earthquake prone areas on the planet, as the country has suffered from 10 major earthquakes in the past 30 years. The reason for this happening is that the country is placed in a very active seismic zone, with complex movements between several tectonic plates. These plates can simply be explained as the crust of the earth, and Turkey sits on four of these plates at the same time. On top of this, there's also something called a fault. A fault is basically the boundary between two tectonic plates, and the North Anatolian Fault, which is the boundary between the Eurasian Plate and the Anatolian Plate, moves right through the country, as it spans from the Sea of Marmara to the Eastern Anatolian Highlands. And this fault moves about 20 centimeters a year, so a lot going on in the ground here. Turkey is split up into seven different geographical regions, each with a major city working as the capital of the area. The regions came to life after a geography congress was held in Ankara in 1941, and are created based on the climate, flora, fauna, location and so on. The largest area among the regions is the Eastern Anatolia region, but even though it's large, it's also the area where the population density is at its lowest. The majority of the region is covered with mountains, and this is where you can find the highest one in the country, called Mount Ararat. Van is the major city of the region and holds about half a million people and this city sits right next to Turkey's largest lake, called Lake Van. The second largest region is the central Anatolia region, and as the name tells, it sits in the middle of the country bordering almost every other region. This is the driest and least rainy region of the country. The major city here is also the capital of the entire country, and is called Ankara. It's home to over 5 million people and is the second largest city in terms of population. This is a mostly flat region, and agriculture is what the economy of the region is based upon. The Black Sea region is the widest of them all, as it extends almost across the entire country. It's mostly covered with forest and has four seasons of precipitation. This is also the only region where tea plants grow in the country, a drink that's being consumed a lot in Turkey. Trabzon is the major city and holds around 300,000 people. The Mediterranean region, as you can tell from its name, is the region where the climate is the mildest. This is usually the place where tourists travel for a nice beach vacation. And its major city, Antalya, with its roughly 1.3 million inhabitants, is the home of the Turkish Riviera. Not to be confused though with another city in the region with a similar name that also sees a lot of tourism called Alanya. The Aegean region has the highest coastal length, and it's home to the third most populated city called Izmir. But the most spectacular place of this region is perhaps Pamukkale. Widely thought to be one of the most beautiful places in the world, its name means Cotton Castle, and it's home to some truly amazing travertine terraces. Oh, and if you didn't know, travertine is a type of limestone formed by the evaporation of river and spring waters. The Marmara region is the most developed and energy consuming region, and it has the highest population density of them all. It's home to the most crowded and perhaps fascinating city in all of Turkey called Istanbul. With roughly 50 million people living there, the city has some insane pulls. And when we mentioned earlier that Turkey as a whole works as a bridge between east and west, this city really showcases both sides of the two continents and the city holds both modern and traditional as well as familiar and exotic. And it has been part of many many empires throughout history. So if you're visiting Turkey, make sure you stop at least for a cup of tea at this magnificent city. Lastly, we have the southeastern Anatolia region, which is the smallest region of the country. It has the lowest population of them all, has some very drought summers, and is also where all oil production in the country is being done. The major city is called San Liurfa, a beautiful city with a lot of archaeological findings, castles and hikes to go on. It's home to about 600,000 people and is mostly known for its historical sites. 
all these different geographic and climatic regions gives Turkey a very interesting fauna, with a great diversity of plants and animals, each suited to its own particular habitat. Sea turtles, monk seals, dolphins, red foxes, jackals, wild boars and mountain goats are just a few of the over 1500 types of animals that exist in this country. Although you cannot really talk about animals in Turkey and not mention the grey wolf. This is the national animal of Turkey and it symbolizes goodness, courage and strength. And the wolf has great meaning in Turkish mythology. Besides these well-known animals, there are many unusual animals that are endemic to Turkey. Like have you ever heard of something called chevrotine? No? Okay, what if I call it a mouse deer then? Not that either? Oh, it's okay. You're probably not alone. This small deer-like creature is the smallest toothed mammal in the world, and it's basically a mouse and a deer combined. Absolutely amazing. As most countries nowadays, Turkey is home to numerous religions, and just as in many other countries, babies being born automatically are registered into the major religion of the country, unless their parents have registered them to a minority religion. And according to this record, about 99% of Turks identify as Muslims. And without going too deep into the religious stuff, there are different branches of Islam, just as there are with Christianity and other religions as well. And out of all Muslims in Turkey, the majority belong to the Sunni branch, and most follow the Hanafi school of Islamic rules. And since the abolishment of the Caliphate in the 1920s, Turkey has had a strong secular tradition in the country. The official language of Turkey is Turkish, and according to the constitution, in Article 42, no other languages other than Turkish shall be taught as a mother tongue to Turkish citizen at any institution of education. So according to the law in Turkey, minority languages being spoken in the country such as Kurdish, Zazesh or Arabic to name a few, cannot be teached for the purpose of being the mother tongue. And any school conducting education in a foreign language shall be determined by law. There is, however, a fairly large percentage of the population that speaks Kurdish. Around 9% knows the language, most of which are the older generation. When it comes to using English as a second language, Turkey is, according to a report by the WE Forum, one of the two European countries that uses English the least, with Netherlands, Denmark and Sweden being at the top of the list, Azerbaijan being at the very bottom and Turkey just above them. Turkish Lira is the official currency of Turkey. One Turkish Lira is equivalent to 100 Kurush. Banknotes come in values of 5, 10, 20, 50, 100 and 200, and the coins in 5, 10, 25 and 50 Kurush. And this is the Turkish flag, the deep red color and with the symbols of a star and crescent in white. The real meaning of this flag is very difficult to explain, as there are legends, actual stories and outright misinformation about the reason for the colors and symbols being used, so we won't go in too deep on that. But the red color has been prominent in Turkish flags for over 700 years, and the star and crescent are Muslim symbols, but also have a long pre-Islamic past in Asia Minor, which was what the Romans called the parts of land that now holds modern Turkey. One legend has it that the first Ottoman Sultan once had a dream in which a crescent and a star appeared from the chest of the Kwadi, whose daughter he wanted to marry, and then descended into his own chest and sprang a tree, whose enormous branches covered the whole world. But that and much more is covered in our video about the history of Turkey. So if you want to know how this piece of land become the nation it is today, make sure you watch that video. And as always guys, subscribe to the channel and help us grow.